Hey y'all, it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Um, I hope y'all have had a blessed day, and I'm sorry I wasn't able to be on here last night. Uh, but I'm here tonight, right? And tonight is um, July, let's see, that's Thursday, Friday. Uh, July the 10th, and our Bible study is on his strength. But now I went back and... And we've missed a couple of these, and some of them are really, really good. So I want to touch base on a couple of little things um, while we're at it. Now, if you're new to the study, this is a Charles Stanley Daily Devotional book called Jesus, Our Perfect Hope. Um, and it is a, it's a really neat little book. I like it a lot. You can get it on the Kindle, or you can get it... Um, through Amazon, used pretty cheap if you want to get it that way. Um, and there's a link on the post when I do the post on YouTube. I need to put it on Facebook as well because I don't know that I put it on Facebook. I look pretty plain tonight, don't I, y'all? I was sitting in there. I've been working on Mama's um, sponge cake video and piecing it together, and it just takes a while. But uh, I've been enjoying doing that today and listening to Mama tell me how to make that cake. It's been fun 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 and i was just gonna put it on cake lessons and chris is like that's a pretty cool video i think you should probably put it on both pages so i may do that uh the last time i taught y'all we talked about the holy spirit and i called the holy spirit an it and some people were a little taken back by that but i'll just go ahead and tell you most of the time in the scripture it does say the holy spirit the comforter the holy spirit and so when I'm reading, I mean, I just automatically think of it being an it, because if it were referenced, you know, most of the time as a person, it wouldn't say the. But I will say that Jesus does reference the Holy Spirit as a person in John, the book of John. And so I thought I'd touch on that real quick. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, because um, it is what it is, and y'all could go in there and read it, but... It's John chapter, I guess, I'm sorry, I may have to do it again, y'all, I'm sorry, but it's John, <coughs> I knew it was coming, it's John chapter, I believe it was 15 where we were the last time. I know it's in 16. But it talks about the work of the Holy Spirit in John chapter 5, 15. And I believe that's where we were last time. But in John chapter, no, that's actually 16. Um, he does say, he does, um, Jesus does talk about the Holy Spirit and he calls it a he. And um, so I was just going to read some of the things that Jesus said about the Spirit to kind of show you that he does call it a he. But I will say that the Spirit is a as strange as it may be, the Trinity is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Even if they are one, they still are different things, okay? And they're one at the same time, and that's the confusing part for most people. And I guess what you would say in a way to me, this just out of my own head, like when you get married and you become as one with your spouse, you know, you're really supposed to be thinking as one, be of the same mind and spirit as one, but you're still two different things. Now, some of y'all might not like that explanation, and if you don't, just kind of keep it to yourself or whatever. But what I'm saying that for is because in the Scripture, the Holy Spirit does say, or it does say in the Scriptures, and I, have, and I didn't look this up for y'all tonight, but it does say, and I know it says it, that the Holy Spirit does not want to be worshipped. He wants you to worship Jesus Christ. So even if they're the same and they're one, they're still different, okay? So it says that the Holy Spirit won't take away from the gospel and it won't take away from Jesus Christ and it won't try to take the glory and the worship from Jesus Christ. So that to me shows that it is something different and we all know that a spirit is different you know but he does say in this scripture he says 
Um, I do not go away. The helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So he calls the spirit of him. He says, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin because they do not believe in me of righteousness, <clears throat> excuse me, because I go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Now this is coming out of John chapter 16 and I started about verse uh, 9 or 10, just to give you an idea if you want to go back and look at it. It says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. See, he doesn't speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. So that's telling you right there, he's not going to glorify himself as the Spirit. He's going to glorify Jesus Christ, okay? All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take care of, he will take up mine and declare it to you. So um, I just wanted to bring that up today because, you know, some of us had a few little questions about whether or not the Holy Spirit was a person. And I guess some of the qualities it has as a person, and that's one of those on the fence questions. Some people believe it's a person. Some people don't believe it's a person. It's not something to argue about or fuss about or even, you know, uh, try to prove because, like I said, it is different. It is a spirit. It says it's a spirit. And to me, a spirit, in my personal opinion, is even if it has a personality, as a, and he calls it a he, it's still a spirit. Okay? And it lives inside of us as a spirit. And it can be quenched. And it can, um, but it can, we can live through that spirit. And that's how we know right from wrong. That's how we are taught in the word of God. That's how when we pick up the Bible, we can discern and we can study and it helps us understand God's word. If you are not saved and you pick up the Bible and you read it, you're going to have a lot harder time than if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Because if you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, it doesn't mean you're a scholar and it doesn't mean you're going to know everything about the Word of God, but it does mean it will lead you into all truth and it will lead you as you need to hear it and as you need to learn. In other words, um, like I said, it doesn't just take over you and, and give you complete knowledge, but it does help you understand what you need to know. So I know all that's complicated, but you know what? One of these things um, that we didn't do was kind of about that. And so we're going to talk about that next. And it says we walk by faith, not by sight. And so consider on what we're talking about. I think that was actually from July the 6th, but it, but it kind of falls in line with what we've been talking about. And it makes a lot of sense to me. And, it, and it, this comes out of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and it's verse 7. And it says, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? And it says, it is something that we're often told, but that's also difficult to grasp in its entirety. The Christian life is a life of faith. Okay? My husband, I hear noises. Anyway, I hear, I guess y'all can hear me fine. I didn't wear my earpiece tonight. But it sounds like somebody is in the shower next door. So maybe y'all can understand me. But anyway, it says that we usually don't have much trouble accepting the fact that in connection with our salvation, we trust God to provide what he has promised. But, it says, when it comes to our daily challenges, faith is sometimes conspicuously missing. It says, we take matters into our own hands and do the best that we can. Simply put, we walk by sight. In other words, we think, if I don't see or feel it, it mustn't be true. 
And if I am not aware of God's present, His presence, then He must not be with me. And if I don't sense how He's engineering my circumstances, then He must be absent from them. And He says both, but nothing could be further from the truth. Okay? It says faith means that our eyes do not see, your ears do not hear, and you do not have an earthly indication that God is intervening in your situation, but you still trust that he is. So it says you have more confidence in his character than you do in your own senses, in his promises than in your circumstances. And so Dr. Stanley, or I guess he's a doctor. He doesn't say he's a doctor, so maybe he's not. It just says Charles Stanley. But I guess he is, and then he says, so let go and trust him. It may be, in it, let's see. So let go and trust him. It may feel irresponsible to your earthly sensibilities, but it's, it is the wisest thing that you can do. So he's just letting us know that uh, when you're a Christian, you walk by faith and not by sight. If you find yourself walking by sight, which we all do, then you need to slow down and stop and realize that you have got to give God the situation and give it, give it to him and understand that he's in control and have the faith that you need to um, let him be in control and, and, and try to and, and stop trying to take care of it yourself. And we all do that sometimes. And I've done it. Sometimes I told you, I believe, I can't remember which Bible study it was, a few, a few times ago or the last one that I had been doing the same thing. And I finally got to the point where I was just like, God, this is yours. You know, I can't do this. Does it mean you stop praying for it? Not necessarily. But you got to be real careful because if all you do is think about it and all you do is pray about it, then have you really given it to him? So just be real careful. You know, I mean, I'm not saying he knows what's in your mind anyway, but I'm just saying, uh, give it to him, give it to him and let him take it, take it over. Now, um, the next one was change your mind and it's about being influenced by the world. And, um, I'm just going to read the last little paragraph of the, the next couple because they all just kind of fall in line. And it says, Friend, nothing changes the quality of your life and relationship with God like allowing Him to shape your thinking. You can rely on Him completely to lead you to the truth. The, the verse that was with that was out of Romans. It says, Do not be con conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is. And um, what he's trying to get us to, to see is that we don't need to be thinking on our own reasoning or man's reasoning, but on God's reasoning, which is pretty much the same as what we just talked about, walking by faith instead of sight. The next uh, study was thinking on him. And we've all heard this before, and it's really, really good, though. And that is the verse that comes out of Philippians chapter 4. And it's verse 8, and it says, Whatever is true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, of good or repute, if there is any excellence and of anything worth, worthy of praise, dwell on those things. So he's letting us know that we are supposed to dwell on the good things and the good, the blessings that he has given us and not to dwell on the negative things. Um, and if we do this, that it would keep our mind where it needs to be. Um, it says, seek the Savior's perspective and his thoughts will certainly become yours. Okay? Now, tonight, it was his strength. And that was the July 10th uh, reading. It is out of Psalms chapter 28, verse 7. And this is a different translation in the top. But it says, the Lord is my strength and shield, and I trust him with all of my heart. He helps me, and my heart is filled with joy. It says, um, and this is a, about feeling weak and inadequate. So, if you've been uh, feeling that way, or you've just been really tired, or 
you just feel like, you know, you've been down. You really need to listen to this one. And it says, whenever you feel weak and inadequate, choose to think about the power of God. And he is in control of all things, and he reigns over heaven and earth with his awesome ability. Then, open the scripture and read how hopeless and ordinary most of the biblical saints were before they used to were used by the Lord to accomplish the great things that they accomplished. David was just a shepherd in the fields, and Joseph was a slave and a prisoner, and Nehemiah was a servant in the court of a foreign king. He says, really, it was as if they'd stepped out in faith and trusted God. It wasn't until they did that their lives took on a greater meaning and importance. They're no different than you are. They had the same fears, doubts, and failings, but the good news is that that same God who helped them work throughout is still working with you today. In other words, the same God that helped them be who they were through him is the same God that can help you be where you are today or where you need to be today or help you be encouraged and get out there and do the work of the Lord or just, you know, be a better Christian, be a better witness, shine your light, etc. You can't do it without him and you can't do it until you set your mind on him and on heaven. Because when we set our mind on heaven, then our perspective changes and we think more about doing the work of the Lord. Um, it says, so when you doubt that you're able to face some challenge, remember his promise that he will never leave you nor forsake you. And that's out of De Deuteronomy 31a. Choose to think about his faithfulness, his power, and his wisdom. Then praise him that the great provision he made for David, Joseph, and Nehemiah is available to you as well. Now, I want to add something to that, and that is, what about the Apostle Paul? Is he not like the most amazing person? I mean, there's, I mean, really, everybody in the whole Bible had problems. There wasn't one person that I know of, hardly, that Jesus used that didn't have problems or that God used in the Old Testament that did not have, like, major, some major problems. We all have problems. We all have things that aren't right. That's why we needed Jesus to come here to start with. I mean, if if we were so good and perfect and smart and all that, we wouldn't need a Savior. And um, so that's what's so cool about reading the Bible. A lot of people never really read it. They just hear the stories, you know, and they hear what people tell them. But the Bible is really some pretty juicy good reading. I mean, it really is, especially Genesis, Exodus, um, uh, there's some really good reading in there, y'all, and it's an amazing thing to see how God changes people, uses people, and just like the Apostle Paul, I mean, he was a murderer, and he hated Christians, and he persecuted uh, he persecuted Christians, and he, he was just a really mean man. He was educated, he was smart, but boy, did, did Jesus Christ turn him into a 360 turn, and just changed him completely into somebody different and somebody who lived by faith, somebody who believed in Christ and lived by his faith. And he gave us most of this New Testament to read, and it's just a total blessing. And our God can do anything. Our God can do anything. I know that. Does he always do what we want him to? Absolutely not. Um, he does what he thinks needs to be done. And that's why we need to love him anyway put our trust and faith in him no matter what, and love him through the good times and the bad times because he knows what's best for us tomorrow and in the future, and he knows what's best for this world as a whole way more than we do. So um, I just hope that y'all have had a, had a blessed day. I know I've talked a lot tonight. I usually don't talk that much right out of the, you know, right out of the uh, Bible study. I usually goof off a little bit, but there was just so much, you know, that we missed and um, we didn't get to touch on. If you're kind of new to the Bible study or you don't normally watch it, always remember that I am not here on the dot every single time. 
Um, I try to be, but I am a wife and a mother, and I do have family. Now that Mama is gone, I don't have her so much to, you know, if something happens to her. But you never know when something's going to happen that you got to be at. So if I don't show up, don't think, you know, don't worry and don't get discouraged. Just know that I had to do something else because for the most part, I will try to be on here when I, I mean, I really will try to be with y'all when I can. But I don't want y'all to get discouraged if I don't show up. Just um, pick up your Bible and read a few verses, you know, and, and uh, um, pray for me and what I might be going through. But for the most part, like I said, um, I'll try my best to be here. Granny always said, Lord willing, you know, I'll see y'all tomorrow, Lord willing. So that's the way I'll just have to be, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, we had something come up yesterday and I couldn't do it. I had to be somewhere last night. So um, I guess that's pretty much all. I'm, I hope... Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I need to share with y'all today that's important or might help somebody. I guess I could tell you this. If I've learned anything over the last few days through my own experiences, I will tell you that it is real important, more than you know, that we put on the armor of God and shield ourselves from the wiles of the devil, or whatever you want to call it. Because um, the world, of course, is, uh, he's the, the devil's the prince of the world. And do I think he's floating around me all the time? No. I think the devil is one man. Now, I think he has plenty of fallen angels and plenty of bad spirits and stuff that help get, you know, go along with him. But I don't think when you have the Holy Spirit living in your heart, in your body, that you got too much to to fight off as far as... Uh, and y'all probably think, boy, you're saying a lot. But I don't. I mean, according to the Bible, we have power over the devil when we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. So I know that we do have power, but we should also remember that it, it is through faith. It is through reading. It is through prayer. And all of those things that our armor, our shield that God puts around us to, to, to guard us from these things um, is strong. And believe me, nobody is immune to their armor uh, having a crack in it and something getting through there and getting and them getting um, in trouble or or doing something they shouldn't do or thinking things they shouldn't think. So the, the best thing I could say just from my experience this week that I've learned is that no matter what, we should make time for prayer and reading God's Word because that's what's going to keep us um, guarded and uh, full of joy. And Jesus said himself that he came um, for us to have an abundant life. And his word is what gives us that ab abundant life. That's what brings us joy, y'all, is those kinds of things. And so the last few days, I've so enjoyed this room, I have to say. I come in here every day. I read my Bible. I lay on Mama's little electrical bed. And then I take me a nice long nap. And I just have it made. God has been so good to me. And I can't, I can't complain, I have to say. He is good. And he is good all the time. In the, in the good and the bad is good. So um, let's say a prayer, and um, I will see y'all tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, um, let's see what our little subject is before we pray. Tomorrow night, it is find your function, and that is coming out of 1 Peter chapter 4. So if y'all want to read up on it, then read 1 Peter chapter 4 tomorrow, and then we will discuss our Bible lesson, and that would be great if y'all want to do that. Um, dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today, and we thank you for your word, and we thank you for your guidance, and we thank you for that Holy Spirit that you have sent our way to give us a helper so that we weren't just left down here on this earth, that um, where you are in heaven and we are down here alone, you didn't make it that way. You made it so that we would have a helper and a comforter, and we thank you so much for that. We thank you for your Father. 
We thank you for your sacrifice and for you doing the will of your Father and dying for us. And we thank you for that Holy Spirit and the Trinity that just makes it just an amazing experience for us as believers, for us as Christians. And we thank you for us living in this age of grace um, so that we could come to know you um, and be able to be a child of God through your blood, your shed blood. Just be with us as we go throughout our day tomorrow and be with all the people who take the time out to think about you enough to listen and read your word. And I pray that you guard us and keep us strong and help our lights shine brighter and brighter. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed night. And if you didn't get to see me cooking tonight, I drowned in my kitchen with a sink. And I've never done that before. <sighs> I'm just wondering what's going to happen next to me while I'm on live video. I know y'all like my live video. No wonder y'all like it. Y'all get to laugh at me a lot. <laughs> that was on Colored Valley Cooks tonight. I will see y'all tomorrow. I love you. Bye.